welcome back to Wizard PhD. My name is Lynette and I am a professor in my muggle world and now in the wizarding world. Today we are going to be talking about all of the analogs from Pokemon Go to Wizards Unite from what we've seen so far with the news releases and with the description from people who actually played the game for an hour. So as an overview we're just going to look at some screenshots of gameplay. We have this map. This is the only gameplay map that was shared or is shareable at the moment. As you can see, the map is very detailed. There are gonna be brooms and owls flying overhead. We have some potion ingredients on the ground. You can see some images around this player. There are locations on every block. So if you have played Pokemon Go, you know that there are points of interest and these points of interest have stop locations where you can interact and they are in that location. They pretty much stay there unless they are removed permanently from the system as a point of interest, but they are static, they don't pop up around the world. So those are the two areas that I'll talk about right now. So we have the gameplay where the world is popping up as you navigate the world in the open space, and then you have the static locations that I'm calling points of interest locations. Starting with points of interest, we have inns and we have greenhouses. Now these are stops that you can gather items from. Similar to Pokestops in Pokemon Go, there is a semi-randomized distribution of items that you could receive from the stop, and there is a cooldown time of five minutes. Another point of interest is fortresses, and these are the analog to gyms in Pokemon Go, where you'll be able to battle with dark witches and wizards, with Dementors, they are multiplayer activities where players will be able to battle an enemy and take him down. Pop-ups, as I mentioned before, there are potion ingredients that will pop up around the world as you just walk around and navigate, and there are also encounters which are called foundables. These pop-ups appear semi-randomly as well and have certain tendencies in terms of themes of what they are. There's a range of things that they could be. School-related foundables are going to actually be found near schools. So those sorts of locational areas are going to matter in terms of the kinds of gameplay that you'll be able to interact with. The article in TechCrunch talked about Golden Gate Park, for example. There you'll be able to encounter more magical beasts, and so it's likely that near parks there will be more beast and creature type activities and events that you'll be able to encounter. After successfully returning the foundables to the rightful place, so you have success with the encounter, then you'll get some reward items from that encounter. With those reward items, you'll be able to level up professions, brew some potions, and even battle at fortresses. And that would be an analog to raid passes. So again, gyms, raids, fortresses, those are parallel. Other items we know about are the lure equivalent is actually a dark detector. Now there are different kinds of dark detectors such as sneakoscopes and prody probes, so we'll be able to see what those different kinds of detectors do. Maybe some are more powerful than others. So you place a dark detector on a location and it increases the frequency of activity in game near that location. So you'll have more encounters. And the nice thing about that is that you can actually stack them. You can stack dark detectors on top of each other. And so we'll see how that plays out. If maybe you have a variety of different kinds of dark detectors, so I'll have multiple different kinds and maybe that has different kinds of frequencies for different items, I don't know, but you can stack them. You can buy lures in this game. So again, there's probably different levels and different ways that you can spend your currency to gather these items. The incubator equivalent is a port key portmanteau, which is an AR 360 experience that you can actually step in to familiar Wizarding World locations. These need to be charged up before they can be used, but you can charge them by gaining distance. So we'll still have the distance that we'll be walking to be able to access the port key. And of course, there will probably be different different levels in terms of if you have a super incubator type thing, you have like a super port key portmanteau and it takes less distance to charge up, those will also be available to purchase in-game as well. There is an energy system, so when you use spells you use up energy 
And the nice thing about this game is that we will be able to replenish our energy with food and drink. So instead of having Pokemon, like in Pokemon Go, where they are out battling and you heal them or revive them with potions and revives, that we will be the people using energy. And finally, this game is meant to be played walking around and there is a speed cap. So instead of running down the highway with your witch or wizard, you're actually gonna hop on a broom when you're moving too fast. I might have missed some analogs from Pokemon Go to Wizard Unite. Did you find any that I missed? Let me know in the comments down below and until next time, wands ready.